Hey Krishna, my name is Srivas Das. I come from Ghana, West Africa. I joined this movement in 1981. At that time, I was a student. I was pursuing a medical profession. But even before the time, I was interested in spiritual life. Actually, from childhood, I had the ability to see things beyond the physical. In other words, um, uh, what do you call it? As extrasensory perception, I had the ability to see things beyond the physical. I can recall that when I was about eight years or so, a, a very dramatic incident took place in my life. My uncle, who was a police officer, died in a very far away city. And the very moment he left his body, the very moment he died, he died in a car, a car accident. I saw him in the house, in uniform. And strange enough, nobody else saw him. We were in the family house when he walked in. But normally when he comes home on leave, he greets everybody. He shakes hands with all the adults and gives we the little children some money. But this time he did not, you know, perform all these rituals. He did not greet anybody, he did not give anything to anybody, he didn't even speak to anybody. He just walked through, went up, came down, and walked out. And to me, it looked like nobody seemed to recognize his presence. So after he left, I asked my father, who was also present, the daddy, uncle came here, but he did not greet anyone. And nobody seemed to have recognized his presence. I'm rather shocked. And my father said, uncle came here. I said, yes. What was his dress? And I described the police uniform. Then he said, then there's a problem. The next morning, they arrived with his corpse. And they said, at that time, 10 o'clock the previous day, he was involved in a car accident and he died on the spot. So I saw his subtle body. When he left his body, he came home, you know, the soul, the, the, the subtle body does, does not obey the laws of nature. It can be anywhere, in any time, within a few seconds. So when he left his body, immediately I could see his subtle body. So from that moment, my spiritual life began. I started, I understood that life does not end with the body. Here was my uncle, he died 400 miles away, and I saw him in the house. So I started thinking seriously that life does not end with the body. So as I grew up, I became interested in finding out where are the souls going? Where do we come from? And where do we go? So when I was in college, I started reading many yoga books, any yoga organization I joined, any spiritual organization I joined. <coughs> I joined the Ananda Marga, I joined some yoga group, I joined the Rosicrucian Order. Finally, I joined the Ekanka. Ekanka, they are very close to ISKCON. They use the Bhagavad Gita. They speak about soul travel. They even talk about the fruit of God, that you hear the fruit of God in the spiritual world when you're able to travel there. That's where I belong. And one day, Krishna willing, devotees came into the midst of these Ekis who were having their regional, regional seminar. And then they spoke knowledge beyond Ekanka. And I became attracted to Krishna consciousness. So as soon as we left the seminary, the, the seminar, I followed the devotees to their, their bus, and they had a, a, a white bus written there, Hare Krishna book mobile. And they displayed some books, so Prabhupada's books. So I immediately bought the science of self-realization. And amazingly, I just opened exactly the page where Krishna is blowing the flute. Because these Ekis, they're impersonalists, they talk about the fruit of God, but they do not accept the personality of Godhead. They say every plane has its own sound or vibration. The mental plane, the etheric plane, the subtle plane, different planes. But the soul plane, you hear the flute of God. And it's so sweet that when you hear it, you don't want to come back into the material world again. So the question the devotees asked was that who is the person blowing the flute? And these rascal impersonalists, 
They said there's nobody behind blowing the flute. It's just the music of that platform or that plane. And the devotees disagreed. They said, no, there is a personality who is responsible for producing that music. You have, you have no qualification to see him. Therefore, you only hear his flute. And this made a lot of sense to me. And they give you the analogy that if you come into this room and you hear some sound and you cannot hear, you cannot see any source of sound, that does not mean there's no source. It means you're not qualified to see. You're only qualified to hear. So, but if you're qualified to see and hear, you will hear the sound and you will see the, the source of the sound. So I saw this was a lot of intelligence, a lot of reason, so I followed them. And when I opened that science of self realization, I opened exactly where Krishna is blowing the flute. And underneath Shri Prabhupada rise, the Supreme Personality of Godhead blowing his flute. And so that was my connection point. So from that point, I started reading, and then they showed us, they gave us an address to the temple. So after some time, I started visiting the temple, and gradually I joined as a full-time devotee. And so from 81 till now, I've been trying to serve Krishna in different capacities as Sangitan devotee, as manager of BBT shop, as temple president, and now I act as regional secretary for West Africa. And of course, I'm also trying to teach the Mayapur Institute. So these are the things I do. One very striking experience I would like to share with our devotee community is the fact that Yamaraj is a reality and the Yamadutas uh, a reality. In my college days, I used to drink and I had a friend who worked in the bank. And so weekends he used to bring a lot of money, you know, in the bank there are a lot of tippings. So he brings a lot of money, and he would take me out from the school and we'll go to drink. So one such, on one such occasion, we overdid it. We drank off our heads and we lost contact with the world. We lost contact with ourselves. How I got back to the hostel, I don't know what, what happened. I, I didn't know what happened. I only realized that there were bruises on my elbows, there were bruises on my knees, which meant that I could not walk home because I was so drunk. I crawled home. And it's quite a distance, maybe about 300, 400 meters from the hostel. So crawling home created the bruises on my knees and my elbows. And for the next three days, I could not eat anything, I could not drink anything. I was just vomiting. Anything I put in, I would vomit because I had over misused the body. So on the third day, I was supposed to be in class. I could not go to class. I was suffering from hangover and I was lying in bed. All of a sudden, I saw three short people with twisted faces, ugly looking, with ropes in their hands, standing by my bedside. I was frightened because I've never seen them before. So immediately, out of fear, I jumped out of the bed and ran out of the hostel. At that time, one laborer was cleaning the outside, sweeping around. So I started shouting, they are there, they are there. And I started pointing at the, at the, at the hostel room. So the laborer went into the room. He did not see anything. Then he came back and said, are you getting crazy? Are you getting mad? Should I call the ambulance? I said, no, I'm not getting mad. I saw three short people, twisted faces with ropes. They wanted to tie me. So I said, no, there's nothing there. So I went back, I followed him back, and really there was nothing there. So it was like a dream. But a few months later, when I became a devotee, and I was going through the books, and I saw the sixth canto of the Shema Bhagavatam, and at the back of it, the Yamadutas trying to drag out the subtle body of Ajamil, then I could recognize that these were the guys who had come into my hostel room, wanted to snatch my soul out of the body because I was misusing this human form of life. So it is a reality that Yamaraj exists, it's a reality that the Yamadutas exist, and it's a reality that we would have to answer for all our activities we are performing. So better we take full shelter of Krishna consciousness so that the Yamadutas will have no power to take us to Yamaraj.
हरे कृष्णा